Uh, my name is Jesko von Wintheim. I'm professor of the practice here uh, in entrepreneurship. And um, the main reason I'm here at Duke is to address this problem. We have fewer and fewer early stage owners of companies. And uh, we're particularly interested in working with uh, graduate students, undergraduate students, uh, faculty uh, to take some of the technologies at Duke and move them out into, uh, into the real world, into companies uh, in, in some way, shape, or form. And um, there is a, a real challenge in doing this. And, and a lot of this is uh, what I call the entrepreneurship knowledge challenge. And, and that is, and I've seen this a lot here, is um, you know, business and engineering skills are taught separately, which actually isn't great if you want to do something entrepreneurial, because quite often, in fact, in my case, it's always been the case that you have to have both of those together. Uh, some sort of innovation and good business skills uh, to go with it. And you know, the uh, really good example of that, anybody can think of one? Maybe Apple? <laughs> All right. You had Steve Jobs, brilliant on the marketing side. Steve Wozniak, brilliant on the engineering side. That's how that company got started. Uh, many, many more examples. Uh, the other issue is that business does not equal entrepreneurship. All right. So I've done my MBA. Uh, a lot of folks out there getting their MBA, and they're going to, most of them are going to do great in the corporate sector. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to do great as entrepreneurs, because entrepreneurial skills is a subset, really, of business skills. Um, entrepreneurship and technology entrepreneurship are not always the same. And on top of that, energy entrepreneurship is not necessarily the same as technology entrepreneurship. So there's a real issue there as you start to get down to this, uh, trying to figure out how to become an entrepreneur. How do you actually uh, get the right information that you need? And so you have information overload, and my favorite word, arg. Um, which, by the way, when I wrote it down here, I didn't know how to spell arg. So I looked it up. And this is amazing. You guys don't know how lucky you are. When I went to school, if you didn't know how to spell arg, you had to go into an encyclopedia or something like that. <laughs> you know, nowadays, you go and you search for this, and they don't only tell you how to spell arg. Do you see this? They tell you how many times ARG has been used in the history of mankind. I don't know how they figure that out. I was really, really amazed. Uh, you, I don't know if you can see that, but in 1850, someone used it once. And then in 1950, I think computers were invented. And you see since then, it's gone up exponentially, OK? Um, here's the most amazing thing on this, though, is you look up ARG, and it gives you an opportunity to, change, to translate that into another language. It's like, are you kidding me? So I know German, and I did look it up. And translate is still arg in German, so that's what the Germans say. Um, but it is pretty amazing. But I don't want to get away from the key point here, which is their entrepreneurship is not entrepreneurship, is not entrepreneurship, is not business. Those are all, they're different pieces to it. Okay. Now what I do is very early stage, science into product. That's what I like to do. That's my background. And so when you come to me, I can teach you a lot generally about entrepreneurship. But where I'm particularly strong is if you have a science. And, and I would say energy, components, those sorts of things uh, is what, what I like to do. We're going to go a little bit into the companies I've done. So have a bit of fun with that uh, still. But before I do that, I want to introduce you to the challenge Oh, by the way, anybody, I should have asked this sooner. Anybody here interested in entrepreneurship? There's a few hands going up. Good, thank you. So I got a few folks in the crowd. And here's the challenge that you're going to face. And I'm going to compare Cree to Snapchat. You guys know Cree? I think Cree is one of the most impactful energy companies on the planet. If you think of what Cree has done for green energy, <coughs> Uh, and by the way, that's not what they set out. They didn't say that it set out to become a green energy company. But if you think of converting incandescence to LEDs, it's insane the efficiency gains that you get out of doing that. So I love this company. And in fact, I've, I've watched it forever because I came down here and started on diamond thin film technology just when Cree was moving out of NC State. Uh, 
back in the, well, they started, the research was in the, done in the 1980s. They were founded in 1987 and uh, productized in 1990, all right? And today have a $5 billion market cap, all right? Which actually surprised me because I think they're, in my heart, I think they're worth a lot more to us than that. Um, anybody here to use Snapchat? Yeah, yeah, my kids use it. Um, <laughs> That's how I know about it. I was like, what, Snapchat? And my understanding is like you chat something and it disappears. Is that right? Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't do the Ashley Madison stuff, okay? Um, right, so uh, here's Snapchat, okay? Uh, photo messaging that disappears uh, was founded and productized in 2011 and uh, today is worth $19 billion, okay? That's the challenge you face as an energy entrepreneur. Uh, that timeline and uh, uh, also the valuation issues, very challenging, all right? I'm gonna talk about this a little bit more in a second, but there's a, John Glushik is gonna, gonna come in and talk about uh, venture capital fundraising. John was part of InterSouth. I pitched InterSouth a thousand times. I never raised a cent from them. Um, but they are, they, InterSouth was a, one of the, the top venture funds here. Uh, he's very experienced in, in uh, fundraising. Uh, however, raising money in North Carolina uh, from venture is not the same as raising money from venture in California. We're gonna talk about that a little more in a second, okay? Uh, but this is your first challenge, the timing challenge, all right? So you got the kind of the turtle versus the hare issue um, now I'm going to talk about venture funding. So what's the issue with venture funding? Actually, in 19, uh, 2014, we had a great venture year. $48 billion was invested in the U.S. Uh, in venture, uh, which is, uh, you know, it's been a long time coming. We've had some dry years, especially since 2008, when uh, the economy pretty much uh, collapsed, and so did venture. Um, here's a problem you have, though. Uh, even though we've raised a lot of venture money, seed deals are very low. So if you're thinking about doing early stage, uh, that's going to be a challenge to raise that kind of money, even though a lot of money is being raised. Um, even angels, who, you know, where you might look for investment, have moved a little away from those kinds of deals. Okay? Here's another problem, investment focus. So if you're in software, media and entertainment, or IT services, that's a pretty good place to be. And biotech, between those four, they make up 72% of all the investments made in the US, all right? So energy doesn't fit into those four. That's a challenge you're gonna have if you're trying to raise venture funding in that area. Um, geographical challenges, here's a huge one. If you plan on staying in North Carolina, 75% of all money was raised in New York, Massachusetts, and California, all right? Uh, how much percent do you think in North Carolina? Two? That's high. Point six percent yes. Is this location of uh, investors, or is this location of? Where the investment was made. Where the investment was made. Okay, uh, so you have a geographical challenge. So if you, to, to take this like to the nth degree, uh, let's take a look at a deal statistically in North Carolina, okay? So we start off with $48 billion. Uh, the North Carolina share of that, oh, it's 0.7%, is 340 million, not too bad. Um, Industri industrial energy deals are 5% of the 340 million, so that's down to 17 million. Um, early stage is 33% of that 17 million, you're down to 5.6 million. And seed, you're down to 250K, all right? That means eh, maybe one deal, one seed deal is done in North Carolina in the industry energy sector, all right? And, and I'm not trying to like make you sad about all this. Uh, I've done my career in North Carolina. I've raised uh, fifty million dollars. Um, none of it. No, that's not true. About two million of that came from within North Carolina. The rest of it from outside of North Carolina. So you can raise money here. 
was very feasible. But you need to understand the issues if you're going to go out and do this. You know? And this is one of the challenges that we have when we talk to students and we say, well, let's go out and do a venture deal. Uh, yes, it's feasible, but you really have to know your stuff in order to know, you know how you're going to raise that. What kind of deal should you be looking at? Where is it going to fit? You know? uh, right now, anybody in this room who's really, really excited about doing their own company, what do you think their best bet is? Having heard all this. Ah, uh, there you go. Okay, you produce and do what kind of deal? Software, data and analytics is good. You know those sorts of things. Social networking. Okay, uh, those are all those you know you, things to think about. All right, so uh, it's a challenge. Well, what we try to do uh, in our group, and I'll show you the rest of the team in a second. Is that we've started a bunch of companies here in North Carolina. And we've exited those successfully. They've all been based on uh, hardware. I, I tell you, I would love to do a software deal. I've been trying to do one for 20 years and have been unsuccessful. So we always end up in hardware. Doing hardware deal, to some extent, is very, very tough. On the other hand, if you can make it work, uh, I would say the same thing in energy, the same thing with Cree. Who here thinks Cree will be around longer than Snapchat? I would agree, OK? So if you can get there, you have the chance to really build something big and long lasting, all right? And so this is where we've always ended up. Unitiv, we did um, elect, uh, electronic packaging, uh, primarily packaging that you use in Bluetooth and microprocessors. Kronos, we did optical switches, uh, sold to JDS Uniphase. Nextstream, we're going to talk about that in a second if I have time, and I think I do. Um, I got five minutes. Uh, we sold to, um, to Laird. Nextstream did the world's smallest refrigerator. And I think that one is kind of closest to what might interest people in the room. And currently, we're doing a medical device company. And this is the group of people uh, that I did that with and who also help teach the courses here. Okay? And here's what we teach, uh, strategy development skills, business development skills, marketing skills, introduction to finance, and then how to actually start a company. All right. Uh, so if you're interested in an introductory level, like if you want to go out and get deep, deep, deep into finance, you want to go over to Fuqua and do an MBA. If you're technically interested and you want to get an introduction, uh, we can do that very well. Particularly, marketing is is and and finance are taught by finance is taught by Rick Scott. He's raised 150 million and exited a billion in companies. So you know, a good guy to talk to if you want entrepreneurial finance. Uh, Carl teaches marketing. He launched the IBM PC. He's launched a gazillion startup companies. And again, with his experience, a good person to talk to. Um, let me just take you very, very briefly through uh, Nextstream, because I've got maybe three minutes left. Uh, this is a nice uh, clean tech startup case study. It didn't start off that we wanted to be a clean tech company. Uh, we wanted to build the world's smallest refrigerator, OK? Mm -hmm. People usually ask, how small is small? This thing's dang small. That's a real normal paperclip, OK? We didn't take a huge paperclip and put this on top, all right? And if you take that and do an SEM on, on it, so a scanning electron micrograph, you can see just how small uh, one of those little legs are, and those, that's actually a cooling device, the, where the little red arrow is. And if this works, I can show you Frosty. We used Frosty to raise our first $8 million for this company. And the reason that Frosty is interesting, I'm going to show you in a second. So we're going to make the world's smallest ice cube here, OK? Uh, but before we do that, we're going to show you how small that ice cube is by moving a pin over. So wait a second. Here, there it is. That's the head of a pin. OK? And uh, by the way, this is called marketing technology. This is what we try to teach people how to do. OK? You use those kinds of things to show your technology to people, get them excited about it. Now you're going to see the current is going to go on. You saw the little bump. Yeah, and now we're going to, we've frozen it, by the way, pretty instantaneously. And now you're going to see. The, the frosty part of it work, OK? Um, 
Frosty, we put, I don't know if that went on YouTube or Meta Cafe, um, but both of you know, I hopefully I have time to show you one more video. Um, and we used that to get people excited, you know, about what we were doing. Okay. The, um, uh, wow, that's a color change. Um, I don't think that's me. So one more. So you say, okay, what has that got to do with energy, right? That's a refrigerator. Well, it's a heat pump, right? So we can use it the other way. And what we did here is we, we were having trouble raising money. And this was just at a time where clean tech started to get exciting. So we said, you know what? We can use this as a heat pump and we can harvest heat energy. Okay, and I came up with this. Watch as we uh, bridge the gap between stone, stone age and, and high technology. Okay, so we're going to take a candle here and uh, put it underneath. And what it's going to do is it's going to light up a high brightness LED. And the most amazing thing here is if, if when we did this live in a room, you know, the candle didn't light up the room very much but the high brightness LED could really light up the room. So it was almost like magic. You'll see that thing turn on there, okay? And, and the reason for that is because a candle, um, a candle produces 99% of its energy is heat. And so you convert even a small portion of that into an, an LED from Cree, by the way, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, that has a very high conversion efficiency, and it turns, a lot, turns on a lot of light, OK? Uh, this particular video and this picture, this kind of picture, went viral for us, uh, viral you know, by engineering standards. But we got like 50,000 views of this thing. And it was a big part of, of our next raise as we went to, out to raise money. And just to finalize this, we started off with Science, you know, this is that's the material that does all this, and it looks pretty darn ugly. And uh, we spent a lot of money, like about twenty million dollars, and took six years, and we converted that into a very pretty material, and ended up with with our little device. And and that's the sort of thing, you know, that we want to pass on to other students here. So, uh, thank you very much for your time. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer those. And we have a few minutes for yeah.